We live in a time where we're at peak technology and our life is at the easiest. And even though we're more advanced than every human in history, but it seems like we're stuck in the mud and we are now experiencing climate change. On paper, it's very easy to explain how climate change happens. Greenhouse gases gets trapped in the atmosphere and just like a greenhouse, it warms up and stays warm. Climate change is bad for all parts of Earth. And that means the dry places get even more dry. The wet places get more wet. The heat also makes the ice caps melt and rises the sea levels all around. So with all the confidence humans have, they can't fix these issues. They say we can, but it's very complicated. Like in the news they say, the car you're driving is causing all of this. The factories, the meat industry, and other stuff. Their solutions are this. Use renewable energy, buy electric cars, and don't eat meat. They half-ass the solutions, but don't give a real answer. Some people don't know this, but first you have to understand the problems, then come up with a solution. And not make people do stuff when they don't even know what's wrong. The Industrial Revolution happened 150 years ago, and we all know it's not very friendly to the environment. Most of our cars, the clothes we wear, the asphalt we drive on, the meat we buy from the meat industry, and a lot of different things. These are all bad, and since the day we opened our eyes, they've been telling us this. But there are things that are way worse than these, and nobody's talking about it, and you don't see it anywhere. One of these is the dump, or should I say the landfill, the places where they bury garbage. Houses around the world create double the CO2 of cars around the world, but nobody talks about the houses. When a vehicle is made in a factory, it creates the same pollution as two square meters of asphalt. Electric vehicles are a good thing for the environment. But why should we buy electric cars when the asphalt we drive on creates more pollution than the car? When you're trying to treat a cancer patient, you have to completely remove the cancer to be healed. And if you don't completely get rid of the cancer, it will come back. And that's when we get to money. For money, problems get fixed just to show. Like cars turn electric. Instead of fossil fuels, they use renewable energy. These are all to satisfy the people. There are other major issues that they don't give solutions for. Like the oil companies have so much money that they don't allow anyone to tell them what to do. But the major issue is that poor countries don't have it this good. And that is why poor countries around the world create more pollution than the rich ones. Like they tell Brazil, you're not allowed to touch the Amazon. But on the other side, Brazil doesn't know how to feed its 200 million population. And this is in a way where the most advanced countries today caused a lot of pollution to get where they got. Countries like China, Japan, the US, and Russia, they created a lot of pollution to get where they are. If we were in a free world, we would force the rich countries to pay for the suffering of the poor countries. But it seems like nobody wants to talk about that either. Another thing you never hear about is that the concrete company create 8% of the CO2 all around the globe. They ask why don't they get rid of cement and they say we don't have another solution to replace it with. Another major issue we face today is what we eat every day. 
As you know, the population is rising. And if this keeps happening, there's going to be a food shortage. So to keep everybody full, we have to make farming industrial. And that causes a lot of pollution itself. Scientists say growing rice has more pollution than every airplane in the world. But 50% of the pollution that comes from food is from the meat and dairy companies. And even though they create 57% of the pollution, they fulfill only 18% of our diet. So the pollution is way more than its value. It's good to know that 40% of the land we have is used to grow meat. That's an absurd number because 40% of the world is North and South America combined. All this land could be forest, green, and turn the world into a better place. But these guys are taking it over. And it's not like they want to. To feed these animals, all this land has to be used for farms to feed them. All these problems are fixable if we stop eating meat. If it's not fixed, a part of it will be fixed. So there is no real solution, huh? Something that we still can eat meat, drive our gas cars, wear our regular clothes, and no pollution? This system has been made and it's here. This is a machine that collects the CO2 in the air and stores it underground. And they could use the CO2 for other stuff. Instead of the CO2 going into the air and causing pollution, it gets stored underground and gets used for something else. It's a very interesting machine that could be easily made, but it's very expensive. The company that came up with this technology says if the entire world gets these, it takes $10 trillion a year to maintain them and keep adding new ones. But this causes the world to be a much better place. If they spread the cost all around the world based on their population, it's very much possible. But they don't talk about it. Either way, we have to fix this issue because it's a major problem for our future. This could be seen in all countries, even the most advanced ones. Like Rhine River in Germany has never experienced this low of a water level. The longer we take, the worse and worse it's gonna get, and the harder it is to resolve it. But what can we personally do? Why don't we buy an electric car? Why don't we get an electric stove? Why don't we become a vegan? Why do we use so much electricity? Ride the bike to work. Either way, these guys try to fill our heads that we are the problem. But for example, oil companies don't do anything. Corona put us in lockdown for more than a year. Cars drove less, planes flew less, factories worked less. But with all that, it only lowered the CO2 levels by 7%. If we make people be a little sensitive towards this and do their piece, it would help out a lot. But we have to know that these little stuff will help, but only if the big boys do it as well. And don't just sit up there and watch us. If you didn't know, in the year 2005, British Petroleum had an ad and said the problem is not just us, the problem is all of us. And you should change your lifestyle because of this. And we can't fix it alone as a company. After this advertisement, they kind of put the blame on the people and everybody has to change their lifestyle. So what should we do? This is a huge problem. I mean, look at the Middle East. Everywhere it's getting hotter. Rivers are drying up. Lakes are drying up. The Middle East also lacks a lot of management. Like for example, Turkey puts up a dam. Euphrates and Tigris is starting to dry up. Iranian rivers dry up. Dust gets filled everywhere. What can we do as people? The most important thing is to show this issue to people and make them understand it. 
Either way, if people begin to understand it, a natural thing occurs and we automatically look for a solution. And that's in a way where a proper person will be empowered to take charge. This shows that when a group of population believes in something, it's going to get resolved. I hope you learned a little piece of this major issue. Just like we said, there's no proper solution just yet. But the way we can move forward is to make everyone understand the issue first. Then we will find the solution.